wanted to finish up one little thing. You might have uh, noticed maybe from my presentation here this morning, there's a lot of information. And I could take each one of those eight stages and do a whole sermon on faith, a whole sermon on virtue. So there's a lot to get in. And uh, I love, I try to let uh, the, the Lord, the Holy Spirit lead me week to week uh, as to what he have with me to cover. And uh, one particular thing he wanted me to cover that I forgot, and I'm going to cover that right now. You know, the biggest obstacle that's been asked, where, where do we struggle in that clay process as a rule? Uh, is there one particular area more than any other that maybe is a, a, a stumbling block for us? And I would say yes. Uh, the entire, again, the whole process is your heart, a humble heart, and getting in God's book. Right. But when it comes to humbling your heart, you might have noticed when I had the, the particular divine nature of patience up there, it's all about being thankful to God. And you know what hinders our thankfulness? It's our pride. So I want to just show you something. And I have this up here for a reason. And that reason is going to be right now. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. I, I don't come here to offend anybody. I try to preach uh, the whole counsel of God, and I hope that doesn't offend you. But if it does, uh, uh, please don't 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 ever leave a church because you've been offended. Right. That's right. the worst. Right. You're just taking that offense with you to That's another right. church. Amen. You need to uh, clear the air with your pastor or whoever. Right. And make sure there's no misunderstanding. I mean, there are reasons to leave a church, but being offended is not one of them. Right. Great peace have they which love thy law. Nothing shall offend them. I don't know if you can see this any better, but this may offend you, because I'm going to say something that sounds kind of like a heresy, and I'm going to say, as Bible believers, mm -hmm. we should not use the word proud. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if this is a cultural thing, I understand you guys are of the race of Shem, mm -hmm. and that in itself could make one proud, mm -hmm. God's chosen race, right. pretty Pretty tough stuff. Uh, and I don't have a whole message on pride, and you will discover there is not one good thing ever said in the Bible about pride. Right. Exactly. It's our stumbling block. It's very subtle. Right. I would encourage you, instead of using that word, because look, at I was raised in this country. I was raised to be proud of my uh, country to be proud of my family, my house, to take pride in your work, and all of that. But you know what? I wish my parents would have taught me this instead. Be grateful. Right. Be grateful, be happy, be blessed, mm -hmm. whatever other word you want to use. And the difference is this. If you say, I am proud, who is that exalting? That's exalting you. Even if you're proud of your son. It's exalting you. I am proud of you. If you say, I am grateful for my son, I am thankful for my son, mm -hmm. hopefully, without you even saying it, you're grateful, you're thankful to God. Right. Yeah. And that's a subtle thing. Right. The Bible says, only by pride cometh contention. Yeah. God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. We need to be very careful. Um, there's difference between the races. Mm -hmm. I know you guys know that. We've been taught that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may take the, the Hamitic race, and they're very, uh, I don't know how to say it, maybe they're very obvious in some of their downfalls, some of their sins, because they're right out there. They're pretty expressive. They don't hide their feelings too much or anything. Right. You know, uh, I'm Norwegian. Uh, Norwegians are known for their uh, solemn faces, and they, they intently listen to whatever you say, and then reject it without saying anything. You know, but I mean, they, they're very not too much emotion, you know, but very proud people. Not good. We need to be thankful. We need to be grateful to God, and don't let pride be your stumbling block. You know, this isn't a Bible verse, but I read this somewhere. It said. Uh, a successful life is marked by a person that can turn his 
stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Amen. Right. We gotta be aware because all along that entire eight stage process, you know, if you're partaking of God's divine nature of knowledge, knowledge profit up. You just gotta be careful. Right. The more you get into the process, the more likely it is for you to get sidetracked, shipwrecked, become a castaway because of pride. I have a little thing up here. This is just something real insignificant that I'm thankful for. I did a meeting last summer. Come to find out, 20 people in the congregation, 25. <laughs> Pastor's son happens to be named Clay, five-year-old boy. I mean, that's kind of sweet, you know? Clay, I'm doing pottery. Well, there's a little Chinese girl in there, five years old. This is her name, Guao Katapo. And in Chinese, that means good pottery. Same congregation. Did I say it? Did I say it wrong? I see. No. Anyway, that's the best I could draw and everything. They showed me her passport and everything. And I'm thinking that, man, you know, those two children were named probably right around that exact time when I surrendered to the Lord. And I knew, I know now that God knew then when I did surrender that maybe I'd be here today talking about that, or I'd be at that meeting last summer, and he was going to have me meet these kids that had names that correspond to what I'm doing. And I'm thankful to him for that. It's a little thing. It's an insignificant thing. It's not a coincidence. It's just one of his little special things. Do we pay attention to those special things? You may know Pastor Jim Lintz. I think his first name is Jim. Pastor Lintz. PBI guy, I think he grabbed, he died about four or five years ago. The Lord took him home. I got to hear him one time at a, uh, a blowout in Pensacola. And my sending pastor, Pastor Matheny, told me a true story about Pastor Lentz. Pastor Lentz was uh, struggling financially. He'd just gotten into the ministry and graduated school. And he was doing a meeting out of town. And after that meeting, someone gave him a hundred dollar bill. This was probably 30 years ago. That was huge. And he thanked the Lord for that. He knew, man, I, I really needed that, Lord. Thank you. Well, as he's leaving town, this is a true story, as he's leaving town, he gets to a little stop right there, and he notices a, a little family about to cross the road in front of him. It happened to be a black woman, kind of heavy set. She had four or five kids with her. And their clothes looked a little worn and tattered and, you know, they were all kind of frowning and just trudging along. And thought, you know, well, typical poor black family, whatever. But as he drove away, he kind of looks at that family in the rearview mirror, now they're crossing the street. And the Lord started talking to him. And the Lord said, uh, I want you to give that $100 bill to that family. And he goes, Lord, <laughs> it can't be you. <laughs> You know, I know how much I needed that $100 bill, no, so I can't really be you. Is it, Lord? Well, the Lord said, yeah, that's, I'm telling you, I want you to give that $100 bill to that family. Well, he was a very surrendered Christian, and he listened to the Lord. He turned around, he went back, he caught up with that lady, and when he gave her that $100 bill, she just went, praise the Lord, hallelujah. She was screaming all over the place, and kids were jumping up and down, and they grabbed hands, and they were dancing in a circle, and just praise God, praise God. Pastor Lance got back in his car, headed on down the road, looking in his rear room there again, the family's still out there dancing and praising God. And the Lord spoke to him again and said, if you would have given, if you would have given me that kind of reception for the $100 bill, I would let you keep it. The Lord wants us to be thankful for everything. And he wants to be overjoyed about his provision for us. That's a good lesson. And I don't always mention that illustration, but I'll tell you what, you know, three or four weeks ago, some church gave us a trailer. And that was above and beyond. We wanted to pay them about $1,000 for that. And they wouldn't take it. And we, yeah, we danced around pretty much <laughs> talking about that trailer. Because I don't, take, I don't take it lightly when the Lord does something for you. Well, I want to talk about something very near and dear to me and probably you. And I want to preach to you a message.